Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackU.com, and today we're going to break down the Bell Qualifier MIPS DLX Full Face Helmet. The Bell Qualifier MIPS DLX Helmet retails for $279 as of the time we're shooting this video. That's going to cover the solids as well as the graphics. Please understand, we don't update videos for price changes, only if the product itself has been completely redesigned. The real draw, in my mind, besides this is a good helmet, besides the helmet itself, is going to be the Pro Tint Shield that it comes equipped with. That Pro Tint Shield reacts to sunlight. In bright sunlight, you're going to get basically a dark smoke tint. As you begin to lose sun, the tint will reduce all the way down to a clear. So you have that range from bright sunlight, medium sunlight, and no sunlight, and it's able to react to each one of those levels of sun. Super convenient if you're a street rider. It means no more dark smoke or tinted shield swaps. Basically, you purchase this helmet, it's a one and done, and that is a great convenience. Who is this helmet right for? I would say this helmet is going to be good, certainly for street riders. It's got that self-tinning shield. But considering the fact it carries the ECE cert and comes with the MIPS slip plane device in place that helps manage energy, I would say this helmet would be at home on the street and at home for track days as well. So you could use this for a wide variety of riding styles. DOT. As well as ECE certified, it weighs 3.55 pounds in a size medium on our digital shipping scale. Let's dive right on into sizing and fit. I measure 58 centimeters with an intermediate oval head shape. Per the bell size chart, I'm in a size medium. The qualifier DLX we have here is a medium. I wore it at my desk for an extended period of time, and I gotta tell you, they hit a home run with the fit and feel of this helmet. It literally feels great. Love the fabrics that we'll show you and talk more about later that they used for the interior of this helmet too. Super nice, right? You're getting a lot for your money here. Glasses compatibility. This offers excellent compatibility with glasses. It was easy to get the glasses on and off and they were able to sit on your ears, on the bridge of your nose, no problem. We're gonna have some B-roll that we'll show you here in this video that clearly displays what I just shared with you. Okay, let's dive into features and benefits now. Instead of opening up with the ventilation, we're going to talk about the shield first because I think that's really a big draw here. That self-tinning Pro Tint Shield, that's a $140 value if you purchase that on its own. To remove it, pull back here on the trigger. Same thing on the other side. Off comes the helmet shield. Also, anti-fog treated. To reinstall it, simulate the upward most position, put a little pressure in here with your thumb, and it'll jump right into place. Same thing on the other side. Before you take it for a ride, make sure you cycle the shield a couple of times to ensure that it's going to stay tight. You'll notice it does also offer multiple detents, and in the down position, while it doesn't offer a lock, that bottom detent is really strong to prevent the shield from popping open during head checks. You're not gonna have that issue with this helmet. Now let's dive into ventilation, and that is something that they really made sure they built a lot of ventilation into this helmet. I have previously ridden in a qualifier DLX, and I can tell you this helmet moves a lot of air. It almost reminds me of the star in the way it brings air into the helmet, especially the previous generation stars. This ventilation system is very similar to what we saw on the older Bell Star helmets. You have a four slot brow vent. Man, that's a great place to bring air into the helmet. You have two vents here on the crown of the helmet and you have what's gonna be a pretty large intake vent here in the chin bar area. This vent flows air up onto the breath deflector to work with the fog-free treated shield for demisting purposes. There are also a couple of slots on the inside here that allow for airflow into the mouth area. For exhaust venting, you have Venturi style of vents built into the back of the shell here, as well as two exhaust vents here on the crown of the helmet. That is a ton of ventilation 
in this $279 package. I spoke earlier about the interior fabric that they used. This stuff, I think I've seen this before, once again, on some previous generation Bell Star helmets, and I gotta tell you, it just feels super nice. You'll see this helmet ships complete with a chin curtain that's already installed, making this, this is a complete package. You've got your tinted shield here, you've got your clear shield here, you've got your chin curtain, you've got essentially everything that you need with the helmet. The liner is removable, replaceable, and washable. If you need to tune the fit of the helmet, all size cheek pads are compatible. So if you need it a little bit tighter in the cheek area, you can go with a thicker pad. If you need it a little bit looser, you can conversely go with a thinner pad. Something I want to address before we go too much farther is this COM port on the side of the helmet. When they initially came out with a qualifier a few seasons back, Right? And you know how technology, the winds of technology are, are continually blowing, okay? It was designed to be integrated with a proprietary communication device like a Cardo or a Cena, right? That is a product that's basically gone away, right? There's very little of it left in the marketplace, and this COM port is being phased out as a rolling change without part number changes on the Qualifier DLX. So please do not buy it for that reason. If you buy it and it has that plate on there, don't worry about it. It matches the helmet. Everything's copacetic. No big deal. Okay. Back into the interior of the helmet. Fully removable, washable, and replaceable. If you want to remove the cheek pads, simply get your fingers in between the backing of the cheek pad and the interior EPS of the helmet. You have two two snaps and some Velcro, okay? This helmet will work with any of the current common universal Bluetooth devices on the market. There are pockets in the EPS that we're gonna show you here in a second that allow it to accept the speakers, okay? If you're gonna do that, you're gonna need to be able to remove the interior and that's what makes this portion of the video helpful for many riders that are looking to do that. Once you've undone the snaps and the Velcro, kind of grab the front of the cheek pad here and just pull it and rotate it like so. Let's get a nice close-up of the quality of this, and that's just nice stuff, man. Feels great. For the top pad, we have two snaps here. Kind of get your finger or thumb in between to release that snap. Up in the front, there are two snaps. Disengage those. Here is your top pad. Something I found with kind of all the bell helmets, these tags are just really big and they kind of can block some of the vent holes up here. Do what you think is most appropriate for you because there is a production date on it. You know what I'll do with a lot of them? If it's my own helmet, I'll just kind of cut them off, right, to get them out of the way. You can also, if you don't want to do that, just kind of fold it over and make sure when you reinstall it, it's hidden behind the liner like that. It just ensures that there's a wide open channel for the ventilation to reach the rider, okay? And you're not choking any of that off. The chin curtain itself is, and I really dig this too, it is snapped into place. There are three little snaps that are holding this bad boy in there that ensure no way in hell is that thing falling out. You can ride with that in the helmet or out of the helmet. What it's meant to do is just kind of calm and quiet the wind in this area to keep it quieter for the rider. Now that I have the interior out, we can have a look at that MIPS slip plane. Essentially what that is, it's a very thin piece of plastic that is on, let's just call it kind of a, like a, a bungee system, right? And you can see that with very little pressure, that is able to just slide all around. In the event of an impact, right, it, it, your head is in there, it puts a little pressure on that, that slip plane, and it allows it to kind of move, and it just reduces the force that's being transmitted to the rider. There's a whole lot of science behind it. I'm not going to dive into all that, but if you just look at it logically, you know, it kind of makes sense. Anytime, instead of getting hit head on, you know, you can get a glancing blow. The glancing blow is always going to result in much less transmission of energy, and that is certainly beneficial for the rider. Beyond that, if you look in there, you'll see there's a lot of channeling in that EPS and the ventilation holes, man. You got your vent holes up here in the brow area. You've got 
the vent holes up here in the crown, the channeling that's back to the exhaust, really well ventilated helmet. If you're going to be installing a communicator system, can you see those right there, Caleb? They have molded those into the EPS of the helmet, so any of the universal units, you're going to be able to put it in. Got a nice padded double D-ring chin strap too. What do I think of this helmet? I think this is a really solid package. This is one of those that, you know, let's say you look at a, a more affordable helmet. Let's say you look at something that's right at that $200 price point, you know, or maybe just under 200 bucks. And that's where you're shopping. So you kind of slot this one out of your short list of helmets. But most people, when they buy a helmet, they're going to end up replacing the clear shield with a tinted shield. That's one of the most common add-on purchases to a helmet. Some of the other more affordable helmets out there today are being sold without chin curtains. Bell has included a, a kick-ass interior that feels great against your skin. An actual chin curtain that's not going to fall out is included in the package. And then the real magic is found in this Pro Tint self-tinting sun reactive shield. $140 value eliminates the need for putting that smoke shield on. So you're saving that cost. You get the MIPS on the inside, right? Energy management device, which is badass. In a price point helmet to have something like that MIPS in there, right? ECE certified, metric shit ton of ventilation. If you haven't figured it out by now, I really like this helmet at or around that $200 price point. If you're one of those $200 shoppers, I think this one is worth reaching in your pocket for $79 more and coming away with a complete package that you're gonna love. Any questions, leave those in the comments section of this video, or if you had a Qualifier DLX and you wanna share your feedback on it, please, other riders find that helpful and I appreciate it as well.